The human toll of Israel's relentless war on Gaza has been staggering. One of the other victims has been the territory's arts and culture. So how are Palestinian artists helping their people to be heard? Hello and welcome to Roundtable, I'm Enda Brady. Now, Gaza had a vibrant community of artists before Israel's latest military campaign. It thrived despite years of blockades, but the war has killed many of its most talented creators. So, can Gaza's art scene ever recover? We spoke to one Palestinian artist about the war and the challenges it has created. Hello, uh, my name is Amal Nakhala. I am 24 years old, an artist based and raised in Gaza City. Um, sadly, I've been displaced for more uh, than seven months to walk the wall. And currently, I'm like counting my fifth months of waiting to get back again to my house back in the north of Gaza Strip. Right now, I am currently in Cairo City in Egypt. And last time I heard anything about a uh, Gaza Strip, I was two weeks ago in um, when I was two weeks ago in Rafah um, city. Um, the reason why I did even uh, start doing art was way before even when the war started and all. You know that many of us had even began. Uh, and right now, obviously. We all know that there is like a before and after and you know, literally everything. Mentioning that before the war, uh, I didn't even like that idea of even talking about us being victimized here and there in every part of Gaza Strip. The war, uh, I kind of like had, you know, that sense of anger because like I remember that I hated talking about wars and so on before or doing, you know, that easy, way, let's say, to show my art more throughout uh, uh, the art, uh, the artistic community. And somehow I felt that during the war that I wanted to get back again, rather to that sorcery, that I wanted to express more what I'm feeling during the war. I was angry, I was sad. There was like a whole of new mixed emotions driven in my soul. I did like something called or rather, I called it uh, like day reservoir, even though I also hated um, doing deities. I felt that I need to write everything I feel and everything I see down uh, in my in that sketchbook. Uh, mentioning uh, that, uh, like I told you at the beginning, that I've been displaced for, displaced for more than seven times. In Hanunas, I was displaced two times, um, seeing lots of horrendous stuff that I can't even imagine that uh, myself would see. And in Rafa, like maybe for more, four, four or five times, even saved from death twice. Anyways, I've written all of this stuff uh, throughout that diary. And somehow when I looked at it, I don't know, like, I know like it is kind of a good thing that I did such thing. But at the same time, I feel like I simply want to burn this or rather burn, it, burn, burn everything down. Well, let's meet our guests. Joining us from Woodbridge in Connecticut in the United States is Faisal Salah. He is executive director of the Palestine Museum US. In New York is Samia Halabi. She is a Palestinian-American visual artist and activist. In Ramallah, in the occupied West Bank, we have Riham Isaac. She is a performance artist and theater maker. And in Istanbul, is Hadil Al-Safari. She's a Palestinian artist from Gaza. And I'll come to you first, Hadil. Gaza has had a thriving art scene for many, many years. Just talk me through how you felt over the last six months, seeing all of the destruction and everything that has happened to your friends, the community, and all that incredible art. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that we have all felt it uh, equally the same, and Palestinians from Gaza uh, more than the others, of course. I've seen the destruction of our house in Gaza. My aunt's destruct my aunt's house. My uncles, all of our families, like most of them, are now homeless. The ones who are stayed in the north, uh, they're starving, and the ones who uh, migrated to the west uh, to 
to the east, the the west. They are also living in tents and starving also in the cold. So seeing all that destruction has been all he very heavy on our hearts and uh, it's driving us now more than ever to continue with the resistance and continue uh, towards the liberation with every possible way that we can, everyone using the tools that they have. Samia, among the tools people have nowadays, of course, the internet and social media, we're seeing a lot of Palestinian art being shared and celebrated online and being brought to a global audience. Yes, that's true. It's a wonderful event, uh, a wonderful new development, and uh, reveals the incredible visual uh, capacities of uh, the Palestinians and Arabs in general as well. Uh, we are a very visual people. Uh, I think especially of the amazing embroidery uh, of Palestinian women who live in villages and the incredible taste of the city women. Now that we've celebrated International Women's Day, it's nice to remember the women. Um, yes, so I think it's a, a great uh, development. And here I'm urging uh, any contact I have with the press to focus on the loss of culture, on the loss of studios in Gaza. The Palestine Museum in the West Bank has done a very special large exhibition of works from by uh, Gaza painters. Um, so it is a wonderful development, something new, and I appreciate it. Riham, the one thing that shines through for me as an Irish person seeing Palestinian art Everywhere, any Irish account I go on lately, any time I go on Instagram, for example, I'm seeing Palestinian art. And the one thing that shines through is the color, the emotion and the beauty of the work that Palestinian artists put together. Um, yes, I think um, it has always been like this, but now it's just more visible to the world. Um, Palestinian artists, like from visual artists, performance artists, filmmakers, um, uh, they always expressed in different colors and in different means, I would say. And also, um, there is a movement that is always in development. But I think now, since the October 7th, of course, and the... Um, the amount of atrocities that we are facing these days. It's just, um, um, it's just a way for us as well to express more through, uh, through like caricature or through posters or through visuals, through images, through even dance. Um, there is a lot of work happening in Gaza right now, which I am really um, impressed and I cannot really imagine um, the situation that they are in, but they are still uh, painting and drawing every day. I think it's kind of an archive of their daily life there, which is very hard. Yeah. Faisal, I want to hear your story about what happened when you applied to have an exhibition at the Venice Biennale. It was rejected. Just tell us the story of what happened, what happened to you next and how you felt. Sure. Um, uh, just as a background, we uh, had participated uh, in the Biennale uh, 2022 as a collateral event. And subsequent to that, we applied for the architectural event the following year, and we got rejected for that. And this year, we also applied one more time for the Biennale, uh, the 60th uh, Biennale. And uh, we also got rejected uh, one more time. Um, and uh, we are always trying to understand why uh, we got rejected, but the Binali doesn't tell you anything. They send you like a, uh, a very uh, short letter telling you you were not selected. Um, and um, so, uh, I mean, we, that leaves us just to guess as to why we were not selected. Um, Possibly because our theme is a is an industrial strength Palestinian exhibit theme that focuses on um, the 
occupation, uh, the apartheid, and the conditions that Palestinians live under uh, for the past uh, 56 years of, uh, of occupation in the West Bank and Gaza. Uh, so f following that, uh, we really didn't uh, really like that rejection. And also at the same time, we noticed that the Binali accepted uh, an, a an, uh, another project uh, related to Palestine, but was not uh, submitted and led by Palestinians. Uh, and, um, and that project uh, appeared to be kind of a watered down um, uh, exhibit uh, that is not as uh, hard uh, on Israel as our project is. And it was led by someone who is not Palestinian, Palestinian, uh, someone uh, uh, from Germany um, with, with uh, intimate family ties to Israel and the IDF and things like that. So we, we were shocked to see that. And we uh, initiated an, um, a petition uh, asking the Bin Ali to reconsider. And uh, we had over 22,000 people that signed the petition from 124 countries around the world. And uh, we don't expect the, the Bin Ali to change its mind. Uh, as we have come to learn recently more about how the Bin Ali works, the Bin Ali is um, an instrument of the Italian government, and it's really managed uh, under supervision from, from the Italian government. Recently, the Minister of Culture of Italy had made it clear that, uh, that uh, Italy will not shut down the, the Israeli pavilion uh, uh, in response to demand by some 20,000 artists from around the world who, who demanded that Israel close, I'm sorry, that um, Italy close down the, uh, the pavilion. Uh, uh, and he, he further said that Israel has the right to express itself in art any way it wants, and even went further to say that it has a duty to uh, to, to show how they, how Israel and its people are witnessing what is what is being done to them. I mean, he must. This uh, minister of culture must live on another planet, not the same planet we're living on. Faisal, thank you, Hadil. What kind of message does that send to the world that Palestinian art is not welcome in Venice, and that there's government orchestration of this decision-making. I mean, it's very, very strange, isn't it? It's very strange, but also at the same time, we've been facing these issues for as long as I can remember. Yeah. We, we basically, it has been also said on the media that we aren't seen as humans and basically we don't deserve the same rights as others. And just as... Uh, it has been said that uh, Israelis are free to express their uh, struggles and what they've been going through. And we don't have the same rights to express what we have been going through for over 75 years since the Nakba in 1948. So this shows you, shows you how messed up the world is and how everyone has this uh, fake sense of humanity that they've made for themselves that isn't real, that applies to some people and doesn't apply to the others how we have this selective humanity that we choose who, to, who it applies to and who not. And it's just messed up, you know? And finally, it's showing the true colors of people. And, uh, you know, it shows up uh, who's on the wrong side of history and who's on the right side. Samia, how does it make you feel hearing that story that Faisal just told us about the rejection and the lack of explanation and then seeing a more pro-Israel exhibition being accepted without any fuss whatsoever? Well, you know, I look at it uh, from a very general point of view. Uh, clearly, the media yeah. and those who run governments, especially Western governments, or I might add capitalist governments, are essentially doing things in their own benefit and in, from their own point of view. And uh, present company accepted, of course, uh, the media has been very cruel to us. And uh, it is doing that because they're favoring the interest of those who rule, those who own the guns and the armies. And this is why we need self-defense. Uh, it is our right to have, uh, to not only to have uh, return to our homes, to have self-determination, but also to defend ourselves. And one way we defend ourselves is by presenting our own discourse and not always just 
responding to what accusations they throw at us. And in our own discourse, I want to make clear that the causation behind rejection is that they cannot afford to have Palestinians be in a visible leading role as uh, role models for their youth. So we have to see it clearly as we, uh, we, uh, we and them. It is not, we are not part of them. The, uh, even if we are on a human level, a part of say the American population, the working class, people everywhere on the popular level are with us and glad to present us in the best light possible. So when we are arguing with their institutions, we should not be delusive. We should understand who we're talking to and why we're talking to them and what we demand and stand up for ourselves. Yes, Palestinians and Arabs make great art. And the art of the Intifada is one of the international movements of the 20th century that brings a very inc incredibly interesting ideas to the mix of uh, revolutionary art during the 20th century, that starting with the uh, uh, Soviet revolution and constructivism moving on to uh, the uh, uh, Mexican mural movement and then the American abstract expressionists. Uh, and and uh, then we can talk within that context about the art of Palestine, the Intifada and the art of resistance and the beauty of artists who direct their message to their own people, not to the Western world. So uh, from that point of view, I view it also. Yes, maybe. Uh, uh, it also uh, it, it relates to my own experience being rejected uh, by a university in which I was an alumna and where I was a professor. And after thinking of all the reasons they have, I understood clearly that they cannot afford to have a Palestinian who has internationally contributed to human civilization by many people's uh, consideration and recognition, be a role model. Samir, you mentioned who owns the bombs and the bullets. I want to read to you a statement from an Irish group who this week found out that a festival they were invited to perform at in the United States was sponsored partly by the US military. It's an Irish rap group from the town of Belfast and they're called Kneecap and they've decided that they will not be performing at this festival. I'm going to read the statement. They've said, it is done in solidarity with the people of Palestine and to highlight the unacceptable deep links this festival has to weapons companies and the US military, who at this very moment are enabling a genocide and famine against a trapped population. So that group from Ireland deciding not to travel to the United States. Reham, would you like to see more solidarity from other artists, musicians, painters, writers, poets, more people coming out and saying, I stand with Palestine? Um, yes, of course. First, I really want to um, uh, acknowledge all the work that, um, that has been done as well from my fellow artists like Sami Halabi is, uh, is a big movement that we are all inspired by as artists here uh, in Palestine, also everywhere. Um, so I want to uh, uh, um, salute you for all your work. And also it's really a shame that um, your work has been banned as well. And so many artists has been uh, being on the, like being silenced, I think. Um, and I think I do agree to that, to that idea that there is this uh, way of, uh, of our work that could uh, show that resistance, that uh, art for liberation and art for movement, for movement people, for movement, for moving audiences. I think there is many layers to our work that just uh, shows our narratives, shows our discourse, shows our uh, views. And it's something that um, governments, the uh, colonial mentality, want to shut it down. Um, of course, we want more solidarity, and I think the people are with us. And I have friends all over the world who keep sending me uh, messages of like what we can do. 
And um, I think big names, big artists as well, has been um, uh, in solidarity with us, but I think we need more. And I also feel like the local groups, like the uh, low-key groups and grassroots uh, artists are also moving and doing all of this um, uh, demand, I think, um, to, to stop this. Because any human being would be empathetic about what's happening and would see the black and white side of the story. And I think this is no time for us to say, oh, I need to, um, uh, to be uh, uh, politically correct to not be banned or be restricted from, um, uh, from my art or from my work or from my work. Um, as I know, so many people do have that danger of losing their job, losing their, uh, um, uh, their uh, where they are, the level of where they are. Uh, sorry about my uh, my English. It's Sometimes absolutely perfect, in, in, Reham. It's easier perfect. Easier to express in Arabic what you're trying to say, something that is very emotional uh, for us these days. <laughs> Thank you, Reham. Shukran. Faisal, just tell me, do you think the art scene in Gaza can ever be restored to what it was one day? Yes, I, I have no doubt in my mind that the art in Gaza will come back. It will come back stronger than before. Let's keep in mind that art is not just the physical pieces of art on canvas and, and on stretchers. Art is in the mind. Art is in the heart. And the heart of the Palestinian artists uh, uh, in Gaza is, is very strong and their imag imagination is very rich. It, in fact, I could tell you that it's already coming back because one of the items that we will now be exhibiting uh, in Venice, and by the way, I, I just wanted to point out that we are proceeding with our exhibit and it's going to be exhibited at the same time as the Binali, but as a private exhibit. Uh, and not a, an official Binali exhibit. So one of the exhibits were showing 60 works for uh, a Palestinian artist from Gaza that he did during the bombings and while on the run to Rafah. And these were done on a, on a spiral pad, uh, 60 sketches that will be exhibited as part of the exhibit that we're having. And we have another Gaza artist also uh, by the name of Muhammad al Hajj, and we have uh, a painting for him that will be also exhibited there. So we have two artists that can be represented in our exhibit. Uh, and uh, it's a shame that uh, there aren't any Gaza artists at all in the in the Binali. Uh, we we were going to have the two artists in Gaza, in, in the entire area of Venice. There's going to only be the works of two artists from Gaza. Hadil, but can so. I just ask you, Hadil, what, would it, what message would it have sent to the world if Venice had accepted Palestinian artists and Gazan artists? And, ha you know, everyone's talking about Gaza. What kind of a message would it have sent to the world that their art was acceptable and that they were welcome at such a prestigious festival? It would have sent a message that the Palestinian narrative is also important and it's valid and that our existence in itself is as important. And um, basically the narrative has been always been controlled by the Israelis and uh, our existence in itself has been threatening them. So had, had the exhibition been approved and uh, mo uh, put, on to, on, put on the show, there wouldn't wouldn't be these restrictions on the Palestinians, and people would be more courageous, and it would empower the Palestinians even more to speak up, and it would it, it would empower uh, other pro-Palestinians also to support the cause even more. And because whatever we do or say, our existence doesn't fit within their narrative, and they are supporting this suppression of our existence, of our art, of our existence. Samia, final question to you. Do you feel that it's been a very deliberate policy by the Israelis to try and erase not just people, but art and culture and everything the Palestinian people have created for, for centuries? That, you know, by removing art, you, you remove a people. Actually, it's a very interesting question you ask because uh, I've been asked when I say it's a genocide, 
I've been asked how, you know, I've been challenged. Is What's going on in Gaza is a genocide, they challenge me. So I looked it up in the dictionary and it said the systematic uh, and willful uh, erasure of a society. And in fact, by definition, Israel and the creation of Israel is a slow release genocide from its very beginning it declared it plans to to get rid of the people completely and take over fantastic faisal samia riham and hadil thank you all so much for your time today absolutely fascinating insight remember you can see more discussion and debate on our youtube channel search for roundtable trt world and if you like what you see please do hit that subscribe button but for now from me and Brady and all of the team here, goodbye and thank you for watching.